Listen Stall did a piece on 60 Minutes. It was a repeat, but it's one that I watched then, but it took on a certain kind of urgency, especially with the infrastructure bill that we have, with many of the Republicans and conservative Democrats trying to deny Americans their ability to uh, get the right type of policies that they want. So I want you to listen to this because I'm going to be breaking up, breaking it up into several pieces, but I need you to listen to this to understand what we're talking about in this particular scenario and, and corp how, how difficult, how dangerous, how our corporations are really nothing more than parasites. Check this out. Today, 75% of semiconductor manufacturing is in Asia. 25 years ago, the United States produced 37% of the world's semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. Today, that number has declined to just 12%. Doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. And anybody who looks at supply chain says, that's a problem. A problem because relying on one region, especially one as unpredictable as Asia, is highly risky. Intel has been lobbying the U.S. government to help revive chip manufacturing at home. Within I have a question. Capitalism is defined as the efficient use of resources. In other words, let the market dictate the efficient use of resources in which one would think the risk of keeping everything overseas would make ensure that the kind of problems we have with chips right now is exactly that, a problem where it now affects businesses more than if they had had some of their manufacturing over here, right? But no, they decided to let go ahead and allow the, these other countries to build these semiconductors because it is so much cheaper to do there and we want to maximize our profits for our investors, for our executives. Not the people who design and make the chips, not the intellect of the people who created everything. So now, what is the next place that they go to? Oh, let's go and let's think a little bit about socialism. Socialism is... The key now, we need the government. We need the government. We don't want them to give people welfare, but we need them now. Check this out. Subsidies and or tax breaks, the way the governments of Taiwan, Singapore, and Israel have done. The White House is responding, proposing $50 billion for the semiconductor industry in the U.S. as part of President Biden's infrastructure plan. Your business is extremely lucrative. In terms of revenue, you made $78 billion last year. Why should the government come in to a company, a business that's doing so well overall? This is a big critical industry and we want more of it on American soil. The jobs. Okay, he said the reason why we want government subsidies is we want more of this on American soil. It is a critical industry. If capitalism is real, if the market has some sort of inferred intelligence shouldn't the market realize that we better not keep everything over there and since we don't want government involved in anything shouldn't we have our investors invest in making sure that for a delta amount of cost on our products and for the safety and continuity of our economic system we're going to manufacture not only here in the united states but since he said it's a critical industry we manufacture all over the world if a hurricane comes in texas we can still go to the manufacturing in california if a fire or earthquake hits california we can actually go and to north carolina that is what it's all about if you're going to have the efficient allocation of resources to ensure that you have continuity in business. But no, in as much as they made $78 billion, of which they don't want to pay taxes on, and but they want to use our tax dollars to subsidize them to make more profits in America, for whom again? They're investors. America, do you, do you start to understand those of us who want to spend on people, on the masses, as opposed to giving away our wealth to these chumps? Why we do it? Why we feel it? Why we support that? Check this we out. One in America, the control of our long-term technology future, and, as we've also said, the disruptions in the supply chain. 
you have spent much more in stock buybacks than you have in research and development, a lot more. We will not be anywhere near as focused on buybacks going forward as we have in the past. And that's been reviewed as part of my coming into the company, agreed upon with the board of directors. Why shouldn't private... Now, again, here, they made a lot of money and instead of investing that money in building more factories in the United States, they gave the money back to the investors as buybacks. You may say, but they didn't give the money back. They bought back stock. In buying back stock, they inflated the value of the stock. So those who own the stock, they get that much wealthier. Whose wealth again? Your wealth. Your technology. The invention that you paid for in college to create the people who had the know-withal to create the technology that they are profiting on from the taxpayers' original monies in high schools and colleges and universities that created the intellect to create those products? Guess what? They get the spoils. They are, oh, but we're not going to do any more buybacks. I'm so sorry. And that's why they got me to run the company now. Well, we are so sorry. We took all that money and we're not going to have buybacks anymore. Well, let's not talk about having buybacks anymore. Let's not talk about having the United States government, we the people, our tax dollars, subsidize you anymore. Why not instead take back that money that you gave them and invest in your own darn factories. Isn't that what's more apropos? Is, doesn't that make more sense? Isn't that more fair? Especially since you folk who are always begging the government to be socialists for corporations are always complaining if we try to give a subsidy, if we try to give a give back, if we try to give any kind of funding to the people in general. Why then should we want to give you money when all the profits from said creation is going to go right back to the same people you gave those stock options to? Folks, we have to understand the lingo. And a lot. this doesn't make a lot of big news all over. You won't see this on ABC, CBS, NBC. She did that great. Leslie Stahl did a marvelous job on that, but it's one hour. One hour. And then we go ahead and we continue to lie to the American people as far as, oh, this corporation needs this so that we can build these things over here. Aren't we a capitalist society where you take the risk and do that yourself instead of begging for socialism from the government? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Industry fund this instead of the government. The industries that rely on these chips, Apple, Microsoft, the companies that are rolling in money. Well, they're pretty happy to buy from uh, some of the Asian suppliers. Actually, they don't always have... Again, check this out. Why don't you let all those people who need these supply buy from you guys and you do all of that stuff in America? Because, again... The capitalist system cares nothing about humanity. It cares nothing about country. It cares nothing about all of us. It says, wait a minute, we can build it over there for a lot less than we could here. And Intel says, well, we're not going to design for doing it here since uh, you're going to buy over there since it's a lot cheaper. So we just ain't going to do anything. And what's the result of that? The result of that is something that we all could see, those of us who don't live and live the fallacy that is the capitalist structure. They're ahead of you on the manufacturing side. Yeah. Now check this out. Isn't that how capitalism works? Somebody else picked up something else. They've got better at it, faster at it. Now you lost. They won. Now let me be clear here. I want chips made in America. But what Intel does, you know what, let's listen, let's listen, but wait a minute, didn't all of this innovation start here in America with Intel? Yes, it did. But it's not only that it started with Intel, it started with you, the American people, the American taxpayer, the American investor who invested in the universities and the colleges and the and the atmosphere that created the ability for Steve Jobs, for Bill Gates, and all these other innovators that started something, not built it on their own, but it created the environment, it created the intellect, it created the intelligence. 
you paid for it, all of us paid for it, that generated Intel here in America. And then the few people that monopolized on that intellect that we created, what did they do with it? They went ahead and said, okay, we created great products now. We're going to build them, not for Americans who invested in us to build them, but we're going to go to some other country and we're going to get them to build it with slave labor or for cheap. Understand the system. Let's continue because if we don't, we are liable to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Considerably ahead of me. We believe it's going to take us a couple of years and we will be caught up. And I Delzinger is making big bets, breaking ground on two new giant fabs in Arizona, costing $20 billion, Intel's largest investment ever. And now, do you see the incestuous relationship? Oh, Intel can't even build it anymore. So we go to this other company to build it. But we want American dollars so that instead of us investing, when we want to build it for cheap, we pay them to build it for cheap. But if we want to build it in America, let's let socialism work. Let's allow the United States to pay for it. But I want you to listen to this because after Intel went ahead and invested $20 billion, they should have invested more, right? They invested $20 billion supposedly to catch up to this company, this Taiwanese company. They're going to spend $20 billion. They didn't go and get the money from their investors who have made billions off of them. What did this Taiwanese company do again? What did they do again? Spending $20 billion on two new fabs. TSMC announced it would spend $100 billion over three years on R&D, upgrades, and a new fab in Phoenix, Arizona, Intel's backyard, where the Taiwanese company will produce the chips Apple needs, but the Americans can't make. How and why did Intel fall behind? It is a surprising for us, too. Intel we spoke remotely with TSMC chairman Mark Liu at the company headquarters in Shinshu, Taiwan. Should Americans be concerned that most chips are being manufactured in Asia today? I understand their concern, first of all, but this is not about Asia or not Asia. I mean, the shortage will happen no matter where the production is located because it's due to the COVID. But um, Pat Gelsinger at Intel talks about a need to rebalance the supply chain issue because so much, so many of the chips in the world now are made in Asia. I think U.S. ought to pursue to run faster, to invest in R&D, to produce more PhD, master, bachelor students to get into this manufacturing field. Instead of uh, uh, trying to move the supply chain, which is very costly and really not produ non-productive that will slow down the innovation. That is so classic. I mean, that CEO of the Taiwanese company pretty much says, look, let me tell you, we understand that the Americans are the fools. So no, we don't want you worrying about where you're going to build these things. You worry about innovation. You worry about innovation, and then we'll build it. Let's talk about innovation, you see. When I designed a product called ComDRV, it was innovated. Well, I mean, you, you keep improving the product, but the major innovation occurs once. And then you replicate and you replicate and you replicate. So you keep making money and money and money on that which was invented. It's like the person who figured out how to make gasoline, right? They make the gasoline and from then on, gasoline is a commodity and it's just a cash cow. It's invented, we know how to make it and we keep making it and making it and making it. And who reaps the rewards? The person who is making and making and making the gasoline and that person who owns the patent for the 17 years or however long you get to hold on to that patent to keep making and making and making. So the Taiwanese company knows already that we are, we the American people, don't look into these things. Don't, the American capitalists, they know it because what they do is they make the chips, they get it made overseas, and then they resell it and they reap the profit off of the delta amount of, of money over what they buy it from, from the Taiwanese company to resell in the United States or to put into their products. So the capitalists make money, 
The Taiwanese companies make money and Americans are left holding the bag. That is the type of economic system that we have. And this great piece by Leslie Stahl with this one company, just Intel alone, is something that is happening company after company. Oil company, semiconductor company, drug company, all these companies, we are the ones who create. We are the ones who pay for things. When these guys have a dip, they come to us, socialism, we the people, to solve their problems. But when it is time to pay taxes or give, a gift, a, give child care, give care to employees who are out of a job, give food stamps, give all these things that people need because of, of generally disruptions created by their maldirection of the economy, they don't want to do. But as soon as they get into trouble, just like when we had the crash in 2008, hey government, socialism please, could you please keep us solvent? We should have nationalized the banks then. When the, oil com when the car companies come for money, please take us out of this problem. We should have nationalized those. Everything that we the people pay for, we should have nationalized because they can say, well, the private sector works more efficiently. That's false. The private sector's efficiency comes from what they want to skim off for the investor. It's what they want to skim off for the capitalist. That's what it's all about. But until we understand the truth, the reality, and on how the system works, we will continue to fall for the lies they tell us and we will continue to vote against our interests and when they tell us, oh, that person wants to tax and spend, we're likely to believe it. When they tell us, you don't, we, why are we going to spend all that $3.5 trillion on infrastructure when we can't afford it? But we can afford $50 billion for one of hundreds of thousands of companies. America, please, please, Share all these programs. Let's wake up and understand how the system really works. It is a fraud. It is a complete fraud on all of us who've actually created the intellect and all the wherewithal in this country. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.